I'd like to take a photograph of you, Damien. Why, may I ask? I don't know. You're just looking rather well this evening. Look, what on earth do you want a photo of me for? Damien, relax. Relax and allow me to photograph you. Out of the question. Anyway, I'm due to meet Elaine. Well, that's not until late. Come on, just a little snap. For God's sake, Roger. Look, Damien, it's just that you're radiant this afternoon. Look at your cheeks, your tie. This bloody tie. You're not taking a picture of me in this tie. Then take it off. Well, all right. Life is not as good as we were all led to believe, is it? One minute it's all Farley's rusks and baby walkers. Nothing but milk on our breath. The next, we're sat here dribbling vodka and tonic with these strips of cloth wrapped around our necks. Was there, has there ever been anything in between? I give my baby daughter images and models of rabbits, foxes, I mean toys, to instruct her about real rabbits, real cars, real foxes. She accepts them with joy. Why, when I, the instructor, have forgotten what they are? Or rather, I have realised that I never knew what a fox was in the first place. Couldn't possibly have known. I give a book to my daughter. Inside are simplified cartoon faces demonstrating the general physiognomical layout. You know, two eyes at the top, the mouth somewhat lower, the nose in the middle. And she absorbs the muck without question. She swallows the blueprint without a quibble. She's learning the names, too. Leg. Dog. Nose. Fox. Heart. These treacherous names that delude us into believing we have the right to act familiar with objects and with ourselves. Well, it's taken thirty-five years, but I'm beginning to know better. My eyes are nameless balls and the back of my hand is the most offensive mystery to me. You know, you're absolutely glowing with health tonight. What are you doing? Don't you dare. But you agreed, I th What if I gave you that idea? You didn't want me to photograph you in the tie, so I suggested you take it off. You took it off, and I assume... Roger, hi. Helen, how are you? I haven't seen you for weeks. The bastards don't usually let us out till ten, now that we're into the last four weeks. And don't ask how I am. You can see how I am. Fucking fat and ugly, but with nice hair. You have nice hair, but you're wrong about everything else. Don't be so fucking childish. Uh, hello, Damien. Hello, Helen. I think what Roger meant was, how are you feeling? I know damn well what he meant. Why should I bother any more to notice how I'm feeling? I couldn't care less, since they proved that my moods and feelings are just a set of interchangeable overcoats of the soul, selected by some mindless physical process or other. <laughs> it's good to see you both pulling yourself to pieces as usual, and yet, despite your best efforts, you're looking more robust than ever. Stop it, Roger. Do I wipe your ass? Well, you did say hi to me just now. I suppose that counts. Yes, it was very friendly of you. You're getting older as you get nicer. I'm glad you finally noticed I'm getting old. I didn't mean... Stop pampering me, for God's sake. If I'm old, I'm old. All right, but you're not old. No one on this earth is old. Decay and entropic ruin see to that. We all die in infancy, without even the faintest grasp of our situation. <laughs> and when you go, Damien, we'll all remark on what a beautiful baby you were. Damn you, Roger. I suppose the pair of you have sat here the whole afternoon, being all deep and meaningful. Well, Damien has... I've merely sat here and received the benefit of his insight. Do you know just now, he was telling me he no longer knows what a fox is. Extraordinary where superior intellect takes itself. Christ in heaven, be careful, Roger. 
You know damn well that's not what I said. Helen, what I said was... <laughs> I'm sorry. What he said was, was that he never knew what a fox was in the first place. Couldn't possibly have known. As I said, isn't it extraordinary where these morbid geniuses get themselves to? I think I know what he means by it. Still, Damien, you must admit that all you ever achieve with this compulsion is to shrink and contract these little lives of ours is actually to create a bigger bloody nowhere to wander around in than the one you inhabit already. We have no right to ignore the truth just because it happens to be dismal. But, my dear Damien, what is so dismal about the symmetry to be found in living organisms? You're forever moaning about it. You're always complaining about mammals and fish and insects, displaying that, how do you phrase it, ah, yes, that insidious, ubiquitous symmetry befouling all evolution. Well, my poor Damien, it's only insidious because you say it is. No, it's insidious because no one notices it. I mean, really notices it. I've noticed it, and I can tell you that symmetry in animals is there to provide stability in motion. It is gravity that gave rise to symmetry in animals. Eyes. What about eyes, though? Don't you find it a rather curious coincidence that... Balls. I beg your pardon? Don't you mean nameless balls? Yes. Yes, I do. Don't you find it something of an odd coincidence that these nameless balls, having arisen from an evolutionary campaign against gravity, suddenly find themselves perfectly placed to provide the unrelated miracle of three-dimensional vision? Do you see what I mean? Do you understand what I'm getting at? You mean that the solution, symmetry to the problem of gravity, just happens to be essential to the solution of an entirely unrelated problem? Yes. Yes. That is exactly what I mean. Damien, now you've started knocking on a door upon which you should not knock. Well, how about a top-up? Damien? Ellen? <laughs>